Nordic Baltic area is uh, a rich area. India is an enormous market, has a lots of uh, possibilities, and uh, we all look for cooperating uh, with India in different aspects. Startups are definitely a key area where we are. Estonia has been very successful. Okay. I mean, uh, we have been inviting also Indian investors. Uh, so investments protected uh, and secured. No, no problem and hustle there. Today we are with the Minister from Estonia, Marlene Ratni. Like how this Estonia and India, especially in the Nordic the Baltic countries, that how they can collaborate with India for the different type of exchanges, different kind of new beginning, new uh, relationship. The Nordic Baltic countries are discussing about the new partnership, new challenges to be addressed, and lots of issues, you know, in this ever-changing geopolitical situation. So how do you see that your this visit is going to help this new relationship, especially in terms of Estonia and India. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's happy to be here. Uh, for me, uh, in my uh, first time in my official capacity, I have visited India before. Um, it is second time that we come together in this Nordic Baltic conclave. Uh, and I think it's uh, first time we come together in um, face to face after COVID. Uh, and uh, I think it's lays a very good basis for the future cooperation because it's uh, the setting of this meeting is something that uh, we value highly meaning we have the public uh, service we have the officials here but we also have a private sector who can uh, present and collaborate so that's the key uh, key for us uh, so Nordic Baltic area is uh, a rich area uh, if you look uh, into the GDP uh, and I think all together 32 million people we can provide like a good uh, partnership for India mm -hmm. India is an enormous market has a uh, lots of uh, possibilities and uh, we all look for cooperating uh, with India in different aspects because the challenges they face. I think uh, we uh, north in Europe but India here in Asia, I think they are similar. Be it the climate issues, food security, um, uh, with the climate uh, matters come together, uh, different natural disasters, uh, be it the education, be it the new technologies. So I think the challenges are similar or the same, and the, the more the democracies cooperate, the best. Yeah, uh, you handle the development and economic affairs uh, from the government of Estonia. So how do you see that when you talk about the technological advancement and the development, at the same time you have to balance the environment and sustainability? So it is really very tough to balance. How do you see as a policy maker that to uh, balance it? I think we go, uh, have to go uh, with the challenges or actually be a step ahead with the challenges to face. When you look about it uh, a couple of years ago or tens of years ago, meanwhile, actually digitality was a challenge. Mm -hmm. So we faced it. This digitalization comes to cybersecurity. Uh, we have to. We have faced the challenge. We know that's important. Everybody is thinking about it. Uh, today, it's not uh, the new thing. The climate change is affecting all of us. Meaning, that we have to see that we move from uh, the usual uh, methods to for heating and electricity to greener technology. Mm -hmm. So I think everybody is at the moment also developing new technologies. I mean, one of those that Estonia is developing as well as green hy hydrogen. So for Producing green hydrogen, you need uh, green uh, energy produced, be it in wind or solar or other methods. So that has to be uh, go hand in hand. And I think India plays a crucial role here to uh, coming alone along with this uh, uh, new technologies, with the logic that we call twin transition, meaning digital and uh, green uh, together. Mm -hmm. So uh, and and I think. Uh, None of our countries can uh, face or address this challenge alone. We are too small. Even India is too small mm -hmm. in global scale to face the climate change. So the more we collaborate and exchange the understanding how the, the fastest to yeah. move to the green uh, technologies, the green energy supply, mm -hmm. the better. So I would like to have your, uh, some kind of focus area because India has also been you know, known for is the digital shift. In the last four or five years that we have seen like how India has used in the banking sector, in the health sector and several things. Yeah. So what are the areas especially that you know that Estonia can contribute to enhance that capacity or efficiency, especially mm -hmm. in terms of the digital solutions? 
We have to talk today, uh, for example, about the uh, sector of uh, mm. e-health, mm -hmm. meaning that uh, how to digitalize hospitals, okay. that they be more efficient, mm -hmm. uh, that the data of the patient is accessible uh, in the hospital, but also uh, between the hospitals, mm -hmm. between the regions in India, for example. Uh, how to do it the best way, how to protect the data also of the people, because that's a sensitive data right. of every person, right? Mm -hmm. We have been wo uh, working with India about cybersecurity uh, quite some time. Uh, one of our com uh, companies, Cyboxer, is working with the Indian University, RRU, uh, and organizing cybersecurity exercises, mm -hmm. because all that it comes for cybersecurity is practicing, mm -hmm. to be ready. Uh, to be, be prepared for uh, possible attacks, uh, assess the weaknesses that you might have in the system. So this is the area that we work together. But also, I mean, new technologies are everywhere, actually. Uh, we also talked yesterday about uh, how we can cooperate in the, something which are concerned that uh, technologies in the defense industry, be it the smart border. Mm -hmm. So their opportunities are very wide. So, uh, and we have not been, I mean, we always focus on the strength that we can offer, uh, mm -hmm. and that's uh, smart solutions, innovative ideas. We invite also Indian companies uh, to Estonia to use Estonia as it is, so, so, so digital, mm -hmm. to use their uh, solutions and services as a test bed. You know, there is a compact, small state, so to say, fully digital. Uh, easy to function, so you come with your idea, you test it, you have kind of a possibility to have it in the real life mm -hmm. and then eventually improve it. So these yeah. are the opportunities that we offer. Yeah, so we have been seeing like, you know, we are expecting also that that kind of a technical exchange should be there. But at the same time, we see that Estonia is going through a shift, you know, that the workforce shortages and other things. So how in this situation, one side we want to engage in a larger scale and how, what are the policy that you have that actually uh, to overcome those kind of immediate challenges? Yeah, these are these are the challenges of small countries that we have. We don't have enough resources. Therefore, we must be, uh, as I said before today, more efficient. Whatever we do, we have to have a solution that takes the burden away from mm -hmm. a, one person or uh, the population. Right. Uh, we will never be too much more than we are at the moment, mm -hmm. 1.3 million. That's why we also seek for cooperating uh, in wider world. That's why our economy is so open. That's why we invite also talents and smart heads from, from India to mm -hmm. the companies from India to set up their research and development centers, for example, in Estonia. Mm -hmm. Because we might be few, uh, but we have a very high skilled labor force, mm -hmm. very uh, easy system to set up a business and uh, very basically non-existent bureaucracy. So that helps to come and test, to come also uh, with your, your own people to work in Estonia, collaborate. Mm -hmm. We have uh, students from India on masters and doctorate degrees uh, studying. So I think all of it uh, relies on the fact that we work together so uh, that uh, you know we can provide uh, these skills and knowledge that we have India can come in with resources that India has. Yes, uh, coming back to those situation currently that uh, the whole uh, this uh, this world is facing due to two reasons like Middle East crisis and Russia Ukraine issues so in this situation how you are going to overcome and push yourself to the next level when there is something very global crisis which is affecting not only one country it's affecting every trade and relationship so how you are uh, seeing this one so it's also as a, cha a challenge for everybody i mean all this security situations be it the russian uh, aggression against ukraine being the current situation in the middle east or other conflicts in the world affect us all in the end mm -hmm. uh, being uh, directly uh, or more indirectly. So the challenge is the same for us again, as, as I said before. Um, for us, our mindset has been, and the mindset is a key uh, about innovating, uh, I would underline, has been um, always that, uh, you know, never let uh, a crisis to be wasted. You know, you can always develop faster in the crisis uh, mood. 
So uh, when we talk about currently the security crisis, for example, in the world, I think we have a lot to learn from that as well, to adjust ourselves, mm -hmm. to be prepared more and better for the future. So I think uh, that's how we proceed also. And we have done lots of changes in our society for that, to be more prepared uh, for different crises, be it only the, not only the security crisis, but also climate crisis, mm -hmm. you know, that affects us uh, the same way. So we develop, therefore, new ideas, new technologies, new corporations. And that's uh, also a key element. I mean, every country has the natural way of cooperating with closer regions. Probably, you know, the best way the businesses work is the closest. But as the uh, supply chain have changed uh, over these last years, starting with COVID, already before actually, mm. then we also, our companies, look for new markets. They look for, look, look for new possibilities. I mean, India is very far from our region, mm. but we see a great potential to work together. And in India, we see also that, you know, because the supply changes have changed, mm. uh, look for the new partnerships. Great. So, uh, as you are focusing India with the new relationship and new markets as well, so are you uh, thinking about the, any policy for the startups as well? Yeah, of course. I mean, startups are definitely a key area where we are. Estonia has been very successful. Okay. I mean, uh, we have been inviting also Indian investors uh, to invest into startups. Happily, many have done so. Uh, so. Uh, if you uh, just to underline, Estonia is the per capita uh, unicorns we have is the most in the world. So we have 11 unicorns, meaning that you know from zero startup to have a um, more than billion investment, uh, we have 11 from such a small amount of uh, people that we live in Estonia. So uh, startup is a sector which is very lively in Estonia. The uh, like say infrastructure or the the uh, atmosphere that we create also for startups is uh, excellent. We have a huge uh, startup event every year, the Latitude 59. Latitude 59 means that we live in the Latitude yeah. 59. So, um, and uh, it creates a lot, lots of attention and that's again uh, the same point, co-creating, reusing, you know, developing new ideas. So uh, that that is the, the general attitude of Estonia. Yeah, so anybody in the world, those who want to go in a different country to invest or do business, they also look for some policy, very protective policy from the government side to protect their interest, to protect their business, yeah. you know, interest and all. So Estonia is also looking, you know, forward or they have their uh, policy in such that uh, that any investor or the new startups are very much sure that yes, we are safe we are there to just have the new uh, advantage there. Yeah, I think uh, Estonia being a member of European Union has the highest standards of legislation mm -hmm. in general, protecting the investments, uh, uh, making the work uh, easy, and but also protected. The companies uh, that are doing business is uh, the layout of the legislative structure is very strong. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, the same we seek in other countries. So that's logical that businesses take their own risks. But uh, we encourage the other states also have a strong legislative basis in order to have this business-to-business -business contract. Yeah, so I'd like to have your opinion or some key points you know about the businessmen or investor those who are listening and watching and they should feel that you know why they should choose in those uh, around country Estonia why Estonia is special for them uh, very simple uh, access to European Union much wider market uh, not only Nordic Baltic there's about 500 million people right uh, easy to do business meaning the laws are simple on place and actually supporting the doing business in very uh, easy way it's the investments protected uh, and secured no no problem and hustle there everything is digital so you can do it on online once you are there you can do it online so uh, no problem skilled workforce uh, all there uh, lots of potential lots of ideas uh, all there so collaborating with the neighboring countries functions very well be it uh, north to uh, Finland to Latvia, Lithuania, or wider Nordic region. So I think the whole ecosystem, be it the infrastructure, be it the digital system, be it the life conditions, uh, that's uh, excellent and working very well. Thank you so much for this short and brief discussion. Thank you so much. Thank you.